What up, YouTube? It's your boy, Ricky Rick, and your boy, Ricky Rick, is back with another Ricky Talk, and today is February 17, 2023, in case you didn't know, now you know, and today, the 31st movie in the MCU comes out, which is Ant-Man in the Wasp Quantumania, and I want to go see this film last night, and I want to say this is like the MCU Star Wars version, because when I was watching this movie... I felt like Star Wars vibes were all around the quantum mania. So we get to explore a new world, the world within the world, the tiny little world that we were. People found out and pointed out in Ant-Man and the Wasp. Um, so with this movie, we got the returning characters of Paul Rudd as Scott Lang. We got Michael Douglas, who I'm still surprised he's in an Ant movie playing um hank pym we got evelina lily playing hope van dyne Catherine newton who is taking over the role of cassandra lang who made a great addition i gotta say man that's another great actress she reminds me of somebody else but i can't figure out who but i like her character i like her involvement in the third film uh michelle pfeiffer playing Jeanette van dyne big new characters edition the one and only him. The one that people are afraid to speak of. The one who's supposed to top Danos. Kang the Conqueror being played by Jonathan Mayers. Jonathan Mayers has been on a roll right now. So he's on this movie right now. And man, in the Wasp Quantumania. He's about to come out in Cree 3 in a couple weeks. Which I'm going to go see as well. Because I can't wait. And they just really dropped the last trailer for it. And it looks like the it might be the best Creed out of the three. Um, little cameo from Randall Park. Who played Jimmy. Woo! Uh, missing character. Michael Pena. No Michael Pena in this film. You know. Definitely. You know. Would have been nice to have a little small little cameo. Especially in the beginning. Because in the beginning we get like a little intro. Catching up with everybody. What have they been doing since... The events of Endgame. Um, and then spoiler alert. Spoil alert. Yellow Jacket is back in this film. Je Yellow Jacket is back in this film. But not playing Yellow Jacket. He's actually the face of Modoc. That was pretty surprising. And this film gives us two post credit scenes. They are actually not bad. I gotta say. I really enjoyed them and... What's going to happen in the future is a whole lot more of Kang. That's what I got from the post credit scenes, you know? We got the first post credit scene that um, we get a bunch of Kings, like over 100, 200, 300, maybe like a thousand Kings in this arena uh, full of different versions of him that we might meet, that we might see throughout the Multiverse Saga. I think that's what they're calling him. The multiverse saga so the multiverse saga yeah i think that's what it's called so we already saw kane and loki we saw kane in this film for the second time and i pretty sure we're gonna see uh another version of kane in loki season two because the way they ended that season and the tease that we get in one of the post credits seems to hint that we will see him again so it's gonna be pretty interesting um i feel like once we get more and more closer to our popular characters and them coming across kane the kane guy is gonna get even stronger even though that this guy did seem pretty strong did do a lot compared to the first version that we saw and just like everybody else who seems to be enjoying Jonathan Mayer's uh, performance as Kang. I have to agree. I really love his performance. I think he does a well job playing the villain. And, you know, when things got serious, I'm just like, oh, shit. You can't take off your eyes off the screen. Um, one of my guilty pleasures of this film was, you know, seeing Modoc on screen. Uh, for me, I found it very funny and hilarious. Uh, same thing with Paul Rudd as Scott Lang. His moments... Uh, are funny as well 
uh, Hank Pym and Michelle Pfeiffer in this film. You know, I'm I'm happy that not all the other are involved in this film, but they also play a role in this film. I feel like this movie did a great job of uh, getting everybody involved and giving everybody something to do. Oh, yeah. Another person who was added to this film was Bill Murray. He played a role. Like I feel like everybody had their moment to shine, stand out, and bring something to the table, bring something to the film. Uh, would I say it's one of my favorite films? I would say I'm just going to keep it in the Ant-Man trilogy. <laughs> I have to say that this film, this third part, Ant-Man 3, had the highest stakes and probably had its scariest villain. And definitely the mission was the biggest that they had to succeed in. Uh, the first two films were a little bit more lighter. Like even though they were fighting a villain or trying to accomplish a mission, you always had the sense that they were going to make it through somehow, some way. But with this film, it's like, okay, how are they going to get out? How are they going to survive? Especially with this guy, with Kane being the villain. How? Like, people, I think that's one of the things that they were asking themselves when they put Kang the Conqueror versus Ant-Man himself, you know? <laughs> definitely enjoying the backstory. Definitely enjoying this uh, journey of getting to know Kane in the MCU compared to the comics. And what are we getting from him? What are they giving us? Uh, definitely enjoying it. And... The lead up, the build up, definitely you've been hearing that a lot with a lot of reviews. It's build up. It's, you know, leading to where we're going. And yeah, I definitely enjoyed this film. I didn't find it boring. I found it very entertaining. Uh, like I told you, if you're into Star Wars, new worlds, new creatures. Uh, there's another person who's involved in here uh, who was rumored to be Mr. Fantastic. Uh, he's the guy from The Good Place. He played a guy who can mind read people's thoughts so that was cool there was a, a lot of interesting characters that we got introduced in this film who also stood out i uh, didn't write the names down just because i couldn't remember what what were their names but there's like uh at least three more characters that i wanted to write down on here uh, you might have seen them on the trailers one is a woman who's a badass fighter Looks like a leader. Uh, there's another creature in here who's kind of like... I don't know how to explain it. Like, he's like Flover, but pink. And he plays a role in this movie, which is pretty funny. He has a funny scene towards the end. Then there's this guy who we see in the trailers a lot who has like a... Looks like a keg that lights up yellow in the trailers and he can shoot from his head who also was a pretty cool character in this movie other than that uh yeah the ants the ants play a big role too i had a feeling that they were going to get involved some while some in some type of way in this film and you guys will find out what that is um other than that yeah that's all i have for you guys ant-man and quantumania do i recommend you guys checking out theaters why not why not it's a good film especially we get we're getting to know our new villain and if you like paul rudd scott lang any of the ant-man films i think you will enjoy this movie uh the family dynamic in here is great the cast is great uh the story is cool it's passable i found it entertaining i didn't find it boring uh not the best MCU movie, but okay enough to watch one time and come out of the theaters happy. Other than that, that's all I got for you guys. As always, your boy Ricky Rick. If I'm not making you laugh, not making you smile, not keeping you insane, or giving you something to think about, your boy Ricky Rick ain't doing his job, and you already know your boy Ricky Rick does his job. Until next time, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed my review for Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, and I will see you guys on the next video. I'm out.